right, we're back. Um, I want to just briefly talk about, specifically, exclusively, about what do you expect? How do I run my, my rehearsals? Uh, it's pretty simple. I've done it the same way for seven years, and I've been successful with it. I feel like students really benefited from it. I feel like we use the maximum amount of time. I usually start my rehearsals with the most important thing. And then I end with the least important thing. And that's not necessarily true because I think everything in rehearsals is important. But if I had to put them in order of which value to least valuable, um, I, this is how I would do it. The first thing we do, and I think it's significant when you guys come in, you, you, you know, tired from being off the road and emotionally, inevitably people are delayed 30, 20 minutes because of accidents and traveling and all that good stuff. But eventually right around four o'clock, everyone's there, even though we're 30 minutes in the rehearsal. So I spend the first... 30 minutes getting to know you guys and why I do that is because people tend to be coming in during that time even though I say be at 3.30 sharp there's always little disasters um, and so we're, we're asking everyone to say things about themselves you know who are they um, what chapter they come from you know three or four random facts about themselves so it helps me get to know who you guys are and if you guys kind of know each other um, then the amazing room coordinator comes and she takes you over to get your packets and they give you a, uh, what do you call it? The rules, things you can't do. She gives you the rules because I'm not over the rooms, um, but she kind of works on the coordination. I know people call me and, and it's okay to call me and ask these questions, but what, who am I going to stay with? Can I stay with my, my friends from my chapter? And that's not necessarily all going to happen your way because the goal of state conference, not the goal, but one of the goals is for you to meet other people. Now, you should have time to hang out with your friends and whatnot and make them a part of your little tribes and groups, but understand that it's about meeting new people. And if there's really something wrong with your roommate, you really are not getting along, let us know and we'll try and adjust accordingly. But don't make up something just so we'll move you, because it doesn't necessarily move you back with your friend. We'll move you to another room. So, I mean, that's something you'll work on. So, I'm not exactly sure how that works out, but she'll answer those questions during that time. That generally takes about 30 minutes to go over all of the rooms and the rules and your packets and the things, your little patches, you use your little patch so you can get into places that state choir on it. And you get all that information during, that takes about 30 minutes. So then here we run into four o'clock, 4.30ish in your, and we haven't sang really one song. So I bring you guys back into our, in our classroom. We sit down and I get you guys all calmed down. If anyone hasn't shared about who they are, I get that out of the way. And we're already approaching closer to five o'clock, usually about this time. And it varies from time to time, but this is kind of how it goes in my head and how it's gone in the past. Then it's time for us to start singing. So five, six, seven, like three hours of legit, maybe two hours of legit, just hardcore singing. Um, and we would like to get through all the songs, at least touch them all, and maybe learn one or make sure one's legit and ready to go because then it's the sound check. So sometimes I like to do the sound check right before we go to break, um, but I would ideally like to have it closer to 10.30 at night so that we can rehearse all the way until 10.30. We go to the to the main arena, do our sound check, go through all of that, and then walk from the arena over to your hotel room or have a powwow. So um, the powwow usually happens after our sound check. And so what I want you to do is after our rehearsal is gone on from you know 3.30, we did our room checks, we got to know each other, we sing for at least two hours, we go to a dinner break, we come back, and then we... Uh, we kind of go through, and dinner time is time to go get your luggage that was in either your ag van or ag truck or in your belt, the bellman is holding for you, and take it to your hotel room along with your dinner. So it's always just like you're you're just going. Like I'm telling you, when you take around running, when the state conference starts for state choir, it just like goes. Like it's intense. Like you're in a little, you know, kind of a, a little state choir capsule that's just rushing faster than anyone else. So you really have to cherish those moments of downtime. So then you come back from dinner. And that's like your last stretch. You're learning everything for your last, you're just going. That's your last stretch. And that's when we start to kind of make sure we start singing whole songs. We start to prepare everything for that um, stage. And then we go out to the stage. We walk in a line to that stage. And that's a whole process, process within itself. We walk to the stage and we do our sound check. And the ideal sound check is singing one song from beginning almost to the end. So we get an idea of what to expect and what to what things are going to sound like and how it's, and it's empty. It's empty arena, so it's not exactly uh, real time. So when you, all people in there are going to absorb the sound differently. You have all kinds of distractions. And I found the biggest challenge for state choir is focus. And you'll see me constantly going like this 
which means focus, you know, just focus yourself. I don't care how many firecrackers and noise ground, you have to be focused because when they say, the California State FBI Honor Choir, and they say, you know, whatever, introduce you guys, it, it, the lights turn on and you can't be like looking over here, oh, I'm on. You have to be really focused and I'll be constantly reminding you of that fact um, because that to me is, is the key. If you're not focused, the choir will fall apart. It will happen. So that's kind of the gist of it. Then the next day, which is Saturday, we audition for solos. We audition for speaking solos. Now we treat the speaking intros to the songs equal to solos. They're both solos. They're huge. And so we have a whole video of my sister Alicia is going to shoot um, on speaking solos. What is going to be required of you? How you do it? And then we'll audition speaking solos. We'll audition riff solos. We'll enter all of that stuff because really a song is ready to go until we have selected a soloist. So on Saturday, we'll select our soloist um, and auditions. And then we have what we call impromptu performances. And this is to me one of my favorite parts of the whole rehearsals. Because we leave the classroom and we go out to the street. We go into the little places I have picked over the years that have different sounds and people walking by and you have to be able to maintain your focus and be able to create a bomb sound and, and understand you're mobile. And that's when the choir either is made or broken. And Norman, 90% of the time we make ourselves doing these performances and it kind of prepares us for the stage because one thing, we're in rehearsal in the classroom, the ceiling's like not that close. And then if we don't do any kind of rehearsal, then we go out into the arena and the ceiling's way up there and there's people everywhere and there's distractions. That's a big kind of a kind of a curve shift. And so the, the goal of our moving performances on that Saturday are for you guys to be able to um, to be able to kind of step by step into that big arena. Uh, you know you've probably already had been in there once, maybe you've already had your your sound check, but we want to kind of milk you into it, and, and it's really fun to jam outside in the, you know, in the Vice Hotel and all these different places. If I could get a gig nearby at a nearby building, we would do that, but we basically it's just around the general area, and it's really fun, but it's serious. I treat those as performances because once we leave the classroom, regardless if we're in uniform, oh, good point. You don't have to wear your FFA uniform during practice, but after the conference starts, I believe it's Saturday night, after that first conference, that first session you don't need your outfit for or your uniform for, but that Sunday, all the way to the end, you need uniform for rehearsal and for conference to be in uniform. So understand that. The first practice, no jackets or anything else. I always sad if someone comes, you know, it's usually the younger ones that come, they're all dressed in FFA uniform. I'm like, you don't have to be. You can be in sweats and something comfortable because we're going to be here for a while. So come dress comfortable. Um, the... Other than that, we love first. We love first and critique last. We love you all. We really support you. We've been in your shoes. Um, and I'll talk briefly about my little history. And I'll be repeating my history because I want to remind you guys that I've been on the exact stage. Um, not exactly the exact stage, but in that, in front of that same kind of amazing FFA audience before in my life. And uh, I've been a part of the FFA since 1997. And so I've been here and I've seen kind of the growing and the kind of shifting and movement of the state choir. And I believe 1997 was the first year the state choir was introduced to California, um, or maybe it was reintroduced, but what I understand it, it was the first year of the choir, it was 1997. So it's been a really amazing experience. It's about you guys, and I really want to encourage you guys to enjoy it. Really, really enjoy it. All right, enjoy your videos. For all you that emailed me, I will hope the emails for you to you soon, and you'll enjoy it. Email me back that you got it, you received it, if you have any questions, list them. I'll make another video response to it. I don't care if it's one person that asked a question, I'll make a video. It's not hard for me. All right, that's the gist of the kind of the intro to state conference, what to expect. Um, and nothing I say can really prepare you for it. <laughs> you really have to kind of come with an open heart and understand that we're going to love you first and just really be prepared to experience it. And so our goal is that we want to make the music so consumable and so fun and so a big drastic variety that you guys learn something about it. And that's really, really what it's about. It's like a big, amazing workshop for music. Um, so enjoy it. I think you will enjoy it, and uh, feel free to call me, text me, or all the above, email me, YouTube me. Um, I have multiple ways to contact me, which is part of the problem maybe, but I figure the more the merrier. All right, talk to you guys soon. Peace.